welcome to episode 27 of the Dead Drop Podcast. I am your host, John F. Mers. Welcome, as always. So, uh, what's going on this week with the uh, whole acting and auditions thing? There have been no auditions this week. <laughs> so, um, productions are picking up, but there just haven't been any calls for auditions. So, um, last Friday I did a, a new job for um, a company. It was a print job. So, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, this is, I forget which, which one this is. I've done a bunch since the pandemic started lifting things and, uh, and people are able to go back to work. So this was, uh, this one took place down in Boston's waterfront and, uh, it was at a company that I've done work at before. And it's, it's one of these, uh, companies that tends to do a lot of work for a lot of outside clients. So this one had to do with uh, software storage, cloud storage uh, capabilities. So it involved a lot of uh, a lot of pictures, sort of kneeling over and looking at a uh, at a computer screen. So um, I'm just gonna do that. There was a little something something on the camera screen there, so we'll get that off there. So yeah, so I spent a lot of time working in close proximity with uh, with some really great great folks and the longer you're in this business the uh the better it gets because you you meet people that you really kind of vibe with and have a good time with on on photo shoots and, and video shoots and uh last week was no was no exception to that uh just a, it was just a great group of folks if you if you follow me on instagram at john f Mers official i posted a picture from uh, of the of the group the crew that i was working with last week and uh in front of the camera and behind the camera as a matter of fact um there was a uh, there was a set designer there that i've worked with a number of times before and he's he's just awesome and uh, i love seeing him he's a great guy so we got a chance to catch up and uh he gave me a joke to bring home to my wife because it's a, it was a Filipino joke. So, uh, so that was kind of funny, but, uh, yeah, but Vern's, Vern's a great guy. So I always love working with him. Um, yeah, it's interesting when I, when I got on, on set last week, um, the director, the photographer that was, that was shooting the whole thing brought, brought me over and brought the, the other model that I was working with at the time over and he said okay you know i'm gonna i'm gonna show you guys what we're trying to achieve here with with this uh photo shoot and um how it's going to look versus how you guys are actually going to have to be to get the look that we're looking for and so you know this kind of goes hand in hand with this idea of how how do you make yourself as an actor or as a model how do you make yourself more I don't want to say valuable, but it, it, in a way it is. How do you how do you make yourself sort of uh, an asset instead of a liability? So one of the ways that you do that is is by learning, you know, the trade talk, so to speak. You know what what's going on behind the camera, so that when a director is giving you directions, you can sort of uh, you can be right there. You don't need a whole lot of explanation to that. So. Uh, Case in point, last week, director brought us over to the monitor and he said, you know, you're going to be here to the first model. And he looked at me and he said, John, you're going to be here. But the tricky part is that the lens that we're using for the shoot has a very small or narrow depth of field. And, you know, all that means is that, you know, within this depth of field is is this is where you're in focus and if you're just a little bit outside of that it's going to be out of focus so because i've been sort of you know working with the pound cake stuff for a while now and also doing my own thing with night frights and and, and other things that i've done i i understood exactly what he was what he was referring to so so basically you know model one is here and i'm going to come in over here and i have to basically get my head almost on the same plane as the first model's head, just so that we're both in focus. It doesn't look like that, 
in the finished product, it looks like there's some space between us, but because of the depth of field on the camera lens, there, there is actually very little space between us. So sort of a, sort of an interesting thing, you know, and, and along with, you know, learning this stuff and a lot of it only, you know, comes from experience, obviously, but if you know people that are into photography or into video production, you know, get with them and, and sit with them and, and, you know, pick their mind over it, especially if you want to get into this business, because the more you know, uh, you know, the more professional you come across. You don't have to be sort of handheld on what the director is looking for. You know, he can simply say, you know, the depth of field, you know, on this lens isn't great. So you're going to have to be nice and close and you just do it, you know. Um, the same goes for, for lighting, you know, understanding the basics of lighting, which is something, honestly, that I'm still struggling with. You know, lighting is is very complex and... Um, you know, the people that know how to do it really, really well, I, I just, I think they're amazing because they can set lights in, in such a way that make you look absolutely incredible. And they do it, you know, the better that they get at it, they do it without thinking about it. And they just, you know, it's, it's amazing. They'll just move a light here, you know, have a reflector over there. And all of a sudden you look at the monitor and you're like, wow, Hey, that's, that's a great looking photograph. <laughs> so, you know, that's, um, uh, that's something to definitely check out as well. So really, you know, when you're when you're getting into this industry, what can you do to uh, make yourself valuable on set? And that's definitely you know one of the ways. We've talked about other ways to make yourself valuable. Number one being don't be a diva and don't be somebody that holds up the production or you know makes people kind of groan inwardly and oh god, not this person again. You know, show up. Do your job, make everybody's, make everybody else's job nice and easy, and then you know everybody goes home having had a good day. That's that's really what it's all about. So, um, but yeah, so that was a couple hours last Friday, and uh, it was pretty quick, pretty uh, pretty painless. So, I was home and uh, enjoying a nice glass of wine that my wife had put out, and uh, probably by about five o'clock. So my call time was 1.15. I got there right about 1 o'clock. And uh, I was there for about two and a half hours. And shot home on the turnpike. Got home nice and quick. Wasn't uh, wasn't a bad gig at all. No no early call times on set, which is, yeah, it's always nice. So um, one of the things that I did last, was it last month or the month before? The month before. Late August. Mid-August somewhere around there, was the, uh, if again, if you follow me on Instagram, the bald-headed pictures that I posted, that was for a recreation, I think I've gone over this before, so if I have, forgive me, but I just want to make sure everybody else out there knows what it was for, it was for a recreation of the immediate aftermath of JFK's assassination in 1963. So it's going to be a multimedia video project that will play in a museum down in Texas. So I can talk about it a little bit more because uh, apparently all the checks, for the pay for uh, for the actors involved have actually gone out. So usually what that means is once you get paid, things are going to start getting into circulation in terms of in terms of the actual project. So if it was a commercial, for example, and uh, all of a sudden my paycheck showed up in the mail, that usually means that the commercial is going to start playing. And so they have to pay as soon as it starts to, to broadcast. So I'm hopeful that I am going to be able to dig up somewhere uh, a copy of, of that project because I believe that it should probably start playing pretty soon. I don't know if I'll have access to it. I may have to bug the production company a little bit about it. Uh, but I would certainly like to see uh, what I look like in this video, considering how it looked when I was turned into a bald-headed dude. And again, you know, I, I did go over this in uh, in a previous episode of Dead Drop. But um, that should be pretty interesting to see if, if, if that's actually coming out. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what's going on on that front. And uh, but as I said, you know, there are no auditions this week, which is a little unusual, but not unheard of. There is a new movie coming to town, however. Um, 
what's it called? Don't look up. And I just heard that Leonardo DiCaprio has signed on to the cast along with Meryl Streep, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, Ariana Grande, Timothy Chalamet, um, Jonah Hill, and the same casting company that I booked the role on Mother Android through is actually handling the casting on this movie. So, we'll see. I mean, I may fit none of the roles that they're casting this time around, or I may fit a number of the roles that they cast this time around. Um, but uh, it would certainly be a fun thing to be a part of. I mean, it's a hell of an ensemble cast that is being assembled for this, uh, for this movie, and Adam McKay is directing it. It's going to be a Netflix movie, I believe. So uh, I'm kind of excited to see if, if I get a, uh, an invitation to audition for something. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, the, uh, what was it? The true crime thing that I talked about last week, they are actually still looking for an actor to play that role. And the interesting thing is that once I started doing a little bit of research on the role, um, because it is a true crime thing, I believe they are trying to find somebody that looks like the actual person and I really don't look like the actual person, uh, aside from the fact that, you know, we're in the same age range. Uh, he was a little bit heavier than I was, I am. And, uh, I just, I don't know if it's a good fit. We'll see. Um, but I did, you know, yes, as of yesterday, they were still looking for the person to star in that role and they start shooting literally on the 18th. So TikTok, it's it's going. So um, I don't think that I'm I'm going to book it, but who knows? They may just simply decide, you know, we need somebody. This guy had a good audition. He doesn't look like the guy, but what the hell? We'll go with him anyway. Anything could happen, you know. It's it's one of those one of those crazy things. But uh, but that is it on the acting front for this week, and we're going to take a quick break, and I'll be right back. All right, so what's going on on the writing front? Well, I am working on three stories right now. <laughs> so, because, you know, I don't have enough on my plate. So, um, first up, the second story, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, we're doing for Night Frights. And by the way, part three of The Longest Walk dropped last night over on YouTube. Um, so please go check it out. Please check out the first two episodes as well. Uh, some, can you believe somebody gave it a thumbs down the third episode? Like it's so random. And I would have expected that on the first or the second episode. The third episode is kind of actually where I don't want to give away what happens, but it's, it, there's a little bit more action in the third part. And that's the one that got the thumbs down. I don't know. People are weird. Anyway, go check it out. YouTube.com forward slash pound cake media night frights episode three. Uh, so the second story in that the witch of vine brook has been edited and did i put in the the breaks where i'm going to be filming that we'll see we'll see um so that's ready to go so we're going to be filming that uh those five episodes probably over the next couple of weeks um also to uh to help we've got some Get some improved uh, microphones, so the sound quality on this next one should be even better than it is right now. Um, what else is going on? I am working on Hunter's Moon, which is the Night Fright story that I am going to release on Halloween itself. That will be just one episode entirely self-contained, just sort of a special thing for Halloween that we're going to do on the, on the Pound Cake channel. So that'll be coming out. Excuse me. I am still working on Stringer, which is the fourth story in the Night Frights series. And uh, I'd say I probably have about 1,500 words left to write on that. It's coming along. I'm really enjoying it, though. It's kind of a, it's creepy, <laughs> which is good, because that's what Night Frights is supposed to be. It's supposed to be creepy. So, um, But I'm having a great time writing that. And then... Just because I love you guys so much, uh, I decided to put together a new Lawson 
adventure that will also be released on Halloween. As you guys know, Halloween is my favorite holiday. I love October. It's my favorite month. I mean, it's my birthday. Of course, it's my favorite month. But, uh, you know, I we haven't seen, we haven't heard from Lawson since uh, in back in the spring. So I'm going to give him a new adventure that uh, that takes place. And, you know, here's, here's the interesting thing. So it was earlier this week, or was it last week? Could have been late last week, but I think it was early this week. I, like, right before I woke up, I was super deep asleep. It was one of those, one of those nights where you're just, like, literally, right before you wake up, you are at the deepest point of your sleep. And this loss and story came out of that dream because it was just so detailed and so it, it was it was funny i woke up and i'm like oh i guess i've got a loss and story to write so uh go figure um so i am also working on that i'm about uh well let's see because it is uh, boop, 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 right here in front of me 28,000, uh, 2,856 words into that one. I figure it's probably going to be about a 10,000 word adventure. So it'll be a, a fairly meaty piece that you can sink your teeth into, uh, for Lawson in time for Halloween. That'll be out as well. Um, we're going to be doing a, a, a bunch of stuff over on the pound cake YouTube channel. We're going to have sort of a Halloween playlist. If you get bored, we're going to we're going to put a bunch of stuff together and, uh, and you'll be able to watch it over there. In addition, <clears throat> we'll have the, uh, we'll have the Lawson story as well. That'll be out. So you'll be able to read something new on Halloween. I don't know what Halloween is going to look like in, in your neck of the woods around here. Um, I think it'll probably go as planned. You know, a lot of people posting memes about if you can get take a drive through stuff, your kids can do Halloween this. I don't necessarily agree that that's exactly the same thing, but neither am I going to, you know, keep a bunch of kids from going out and having a good time considering how the rest of 2020 is gone, quite frankly. So we will, we'll see what, uh, what happens around here. But if your neck of the woods, if Halloween is a little different this year, um, just jump on over to YouTube to pound cake media and, uh, and we'll have some stuff for you to watch. And, uh, and fun stuff like that. And then, of course, you'll have the Lawson story as well. I do not have a title for this thing yet, which is weird because a lot of times I actually start with a title. Um, the Dream did not come with a title. And I, um, for the life of me, I'm, I'm still not sure exactly where it's going. It was not, the Dream did not end. Let's put it that way. Like my alarm went off midway through the Dream. So I've got the first part. <laughs> I don't know about the, I don't know about the last part. We'll see. We'll see if I, uh, if I can pull it all together and, uh, and turn it into something that you guys will enjoy. Um, so it is currently right now it's untitled. It just says, you know, uh, in where I store all my stuff, it just simply says, you know, it's in the Lawson folder. And then there's a folder in that and it says Halloween 2020 story. And that's, that's it. And on Scrivener, which is what I write in, uh, it's untitled at this point. So, who knows? I'm batting around a couple of potentials, but I'm not married to any of them. So, um, yeah. So that is, uh, that's on the writing plate right now. I know I said I was going to get to, you know, zombie rue number three and I will, and I've got a bunch of other stuff that I need to edit and, you know, not the least of which are the four novels that I wrote back in the spring. Um, and I need to get those all wrapped up and, and at least into the production pipeline before the end of the year. So, um, we're coming down to it. So I need to get, uh, I need to get off my ass and get that stuff squared away. But this is the state of the world that we're living in right now. Things are, things are busy. Things are crazy. Things are, are chaotic. So I know for a lot of folks being able to read something new is sort of a, uh, a cool way to, to ground yourself or at least escape the, uh, the, the specter of reality for, for lack of a better term. And, uh, and I don't blame you. I've, I've had to do that a lot myself lately. I was saying to my wife that yesterday 
It was just one of these days where I was just tired. Not physically, just like emotionally and spiritually. I'm so tired of the state of affairs that is plaguing us right now. Um, it just, it wears on you after a bit, you know? So don't be afraid to take some time for yourself. You know, that's, that's what I've had to do. And in fact, one of the things that I'm doing, I was going to talk about this later in the show, but I'll talk about it now. One of the things that I've been doing is literally, I call it my unplug hour. And I just kind of turn off my phone. I go downstairs. Um, if you've seen Night Frights, I have that great wraparound leather chair. I've wanted one of those things for like ever in a day. And, and finally got one. And I love it. I sit in that thing. <laughs> it's just, it's awesome. So I put a fire on, brew up a cup of tea, Monday through Thursday, and Friday and Saturday. It's an adult beverage. But I get a cup of tea, bring my notebook down. This is my, I'll show you my notebook here. This is, this is my notebook. It is a thick notebook. And it has just tons of stuff on it. Um, and my favorite pen. And I go downstairs and I jot down all sorts of notes. And uh, I kind of forget about being in front of a screen, whether it's this desktop screen that I'm recording this on or... Um, you know, uh, my phone screen or, or what have you. And I just, uh, I just kind of let my brain go nuts for a little bit and it's super nice. I absolutely love it. Um, I don't put the news on, you know, I, I get the news in the morning, but in, you know, in the evening, you know, the news does not go on. Um, I keep up with what's going on in the world, but there's just, there's just been so much, you know, heartache this year. It's just, uh, I think for my own well-being, you just and and for your well-being, and maybe this works for you, maybe it doesn't. You just have to give yourself those moments where you say, you know, what, I just I got to step away from this stuff, and I go put some music on, and uh, you know, remember when life was a little bit better. Um, so yeah, so the unplug hour, give it a try. I highly recommend it. Um, it's something that I've been doing fairly consistently yeah consistently for about the last two weeks and uh i uh, i'm loving it you know i've been writing down a crap ton of stuff in the notebook that i need to get to and story fragments and production notes and uh this that and the other thing oh speaking of which real quick before i forget so we talked about last week the horror the 15 minute thereabouts horror movie that I wanted to shoot in time for Halloween. Clearly, that is not going to happen. We, I, it's just there's no way we can get the production off the ground and uh, and turned around in time for Halloween, which kind of bums me out. But um, the script is done. At least you know my pass on the script. Chris has taken a look at it. He thinks that we should probably trim a few pages out of it and uh, and make it a little bit more streamlined, which is cool. Um, so he's given that a look see right now and then hopefully we will uh we'll shoot it sometime you know fairly soon and then get it into post and maybe we'll have it in time for the holidays that would be really cool um so yeah last week i kind of teased you about about the idea that maybe we would have something else available on halloween it's it's just simply not in the cards right now so unfortunately that will be uh That'll have to wait, at least for the time being. Like I said, we'll get it done. And uh, it's kind of a quirky little little horror movie. So uh, I'm excited about getting that done. And uh, yeah, we're going to move on now. All right, so we already talked about Night Frights Episode 3. And uh, again, please go on out to YouTube and leave us a like, leave us a comment. Laura, thank you again for your awesome comments out there. And Eddie... We, uh, we appreciate your comments as well. So, uh, Cocktails and Screams, the f sort of the flagship podcast for Pound Cake. This was the one that uh, Chris had the idea to start, and we started it back in July. We are already up to, we filmed episode 14 this past Saturday. So, we're going to do, I think, six more episodes. And then uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break 
uh, kind of go back in, streamline some production aspects of it. The sound has been uh, a little wonky the last couple of episodes. Uh, not necessarily our fault per se. Apparently, Zoom kind of reset the de reset the thing to default after we had kind of tinkered with it a little bit. Um, but it was our fault for not checking and making sure that uh, that you guys got the best quality uh, in terms of the podcast or the or the video cast. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna take some time after episode twenty, which will bring us probably right into the middle of December. So um, we're going to record this Saturday, episode 15. Then we're not going to record on the 24th or the 31st, um, since I need those nights off. Uh, typically we record on a Saturday night. I'm going to, I'm going to have those, those, uh, those nights off. We're going to do three, probably three more episodes in November, and then we'll do two more episodes in December. And then we'll we'll take time off for the holidays just because schedules get crazy around the holidays anyway. And, uh, you know, even with the pandemic, you still have to make time to go out and buy stuff for people and celebrate and have a good time. So we will be back after episode 20. We'll be back sometime after the start of the new year. And uh, hopefully with, uh, with much improved production value and sound and lighting and all that other good stuff. But that is, uh, that is where we are at right now. So 15 will be recorded this Saturday. Then we're off for a couple of weeks. We'll be back uh, probably the first weekend in November with uh, 16, 17, 18. And then in December, we'll finish up with 19 and 20. And, and that'll be that'll be that. <clears throat> and also, uh, we're going to do an episode of After Hours, just completely on its own. After Hours actually started with Cocktails and Screams number two. So we've kind of been running one behind on After Hours. So if we finish, you know, 2020 with 20 episodes of Cocktails and Screams, we thought it would be kind of cool to have 20 episodes of after hours as well. So we're going to sneak in sort of a orphan episode of after hours, excuse me, um, somewhere since it's unscripted, Chris and I can pretty much just literally set up a zoom call, get a drink and sit and talk for a couple of hours on pretty much anything under the sun. So that is going to be happening as well. We're going to sneak that in, uh, somewhere along the lines for that. So just to bring it up to uh, 20 and 20, which considering we started this in July, 40 episodes is, uh, I think it's pretty impressive, and especially since these episodes are at least, I believe all of them are at least an hour a pop. And in some cases they're closer to two hours. Uh, we've got some after hours episodes that are, that run, pretty deep and pretty far so if you haven't checked those out uh, please do uh, you can get after hours and cocktails and screams they're under the same account uh, wherever you get your podcasts and we also video those as well so those are out on the YouTube channel so be sure to check those out um, what else what else yeah we already did the uh, Dark Solace update Dark Solace is the working title of the horror film that uh, that we're going to be shooting, I don't know. I don't know if it'll stay. I'm not necessarily married to the title. A lot of times, um, I'll throw a title down on a screenplay, but I'm not necessarily married to it. So we'll see. We'll see what, uh, what Chris thinks about it. See if we can come up with something uh, a little bit better than that. And what do we have coming up? Oh yes, we have voting coming up. Please, please, please make sure that you are registered to vote. It is a crucial election for the future of this nation. Um, not to get too deep into it, because I am practicing my wellness with the Unplug Hour, and you all should do the same. But uh, please do make sure that you are registered to vote, and then have a plan to vote on Election Day. Hearing all sorts of stories about... Uh, you know, crazy armed people going to be showing up and making sure that you're legit. Uh, I don't know about your state. I posted something on Facebook. There is a resource available that you can look at um, for each and every state that tells you 
whether militias or militia members are allowed to be at your polling place. Um, so familiarize yourself with those. And, uh, and if anybody gives you any shit about it, tell them to get out of your way. And if they don't call the FBI, the FBI has a number for, uh, for folks to call. If you feel like your right to vote is being uh, infringed upon and uh, if somebody's giving you crap about it. So, and if not the FBI, call your local police and, and bring your cell phone or record the people. If they're intimidating you in any way, record them, you know, have the cops come down and either arrest them or tell them to back off. Um, Cause I fully expect that we're going to see a whole bunch of ugliness leading up to and beyond the election. Uh, I would recommend laying in a substantial store of alcohol for for election night. I intend to be up quite late on election night, hoping for uh, for a very good outcome for the future and safety of this nation. And uh, hopefully you will do the same. So anyway, that is going to do it for this episode of Dead Drop. As always, thank you all for tuning in. Um, check out... Uh, be sure to check out johnfmers.net forward slash all hyphen on hyphen one to make sure you're caught up with all of my releases. If there are any books out there that you haven't uh, picked up for yourself, please do. And also uh, head on out to youtube.com forward slash pound cake media. Uh, subscribe, like, share, do all that crazy, crazy stuff. We've got some, uh, we've got some big stuff coming out that I still can't talk about, but uh, it's a lot of fun. And we're taking ever closer to my first uh, feature film appearance. That uh, shoot date is a little after Election Day. So I um, haven't seen a script or a contract yet, but uh, I am assured that both are coming. So uh, it's, getting, uh, it's getting interesting. It's getting exciting. But anyway, I wish you all the best. The weekend is fast approaching, so have a good one. And don't forget to take some time for yourself. Rest up, be well, be aware of uh, when things are starting to get to you, and take some time. Get better. All right, you guys have a great night and have a great weekend. I will talk to you next week. Take care.